Hi, so I thought I'd do a video about generally what we're up to, a tour of the lab, a tour of some of the projects we're working on, and uh, talk about a few of the people who are actually here at the lab now. The reason for doing that is because when I was a kid, I always imagined that when I left school, the teachers ceased to exist. I couldn't imagine them having a life outside of school. And to a certain extent, I get the feeling that when people feel that the video camera is off, then there's no life beyond the video. Now, the video camera and the channel are all about uh, a window into the lab. So when there aren't any videos, it really means that we're just stupidly, stupidly busy here in the lab. So busy, we don't really have time to do videos, because videos take a lot to do. They take hours of work to do a single video. But a lot of people have been writing emails to me saying, hey, are you alive? What's going on? And that seemed quite fair. So we've got a lot going on. So much so that I thought it'd be handy and interesting to have a bit of a tour and see where we've got to in the way that the lab is actually working and what kind of things we're working on. So we're going to have a talk with a few people, we're going to have a walk around the lab and we're going to have a look at a few of the projects that we're working on at the moment. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Shut up. It's rolling, I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wind will change, it'll stay that way. Yeah? Yay! So, how long have you been here, Sam? I've been here a few weeks. Loving it? Love it. Awesome. Why? Because, one, it gets me out of the house. Yeah. You know, I've been out of work for a while, and, you know, coming out and doing something and having a purpose in life and a goal to go for, yeah. you know, it's, I'm loving it. it. It's, yeah, absolutely loving it. Yeah. What would you say to anybody who was wanting that chair that you're sat in? Oh, that should be so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's having a lost. <laughs> I do. I do. Do you mean the hours go? You know, you, you you set yourself a project or something that you're doing, and you sort of look at the time, and like two and a half hours is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's taking up my time, but it's good time. It's quality time. Mm -hmm. You know, time that's worth putting your effort into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what's important for us here, obviously, is that everybody gets along, that we're, we're a good team. I, I actually, it, it sounds a bit egocentric, right? Think more of us like a family. Absolutely. You know, and I think we have that kind of... We do, and everybody here gets on. And the fact that when I'm here, I've got support all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, was, when I was at home and I was doing this, it was emails or phone calls, and I felt I was interrupting. You know, whereas now I can just go, Rob, what about this? Or Steve, can you help me with this? Or... You know, and we have a laugh. We have a laugh. There's you've got serious moments, you've got your good times, you know? And it, it works well here. Mm. I do worry about you, though, because, you know, you, it, it's not one of those things where you're a passive kind of girl. Actually, you've really got a lot of get up and go, eh? Hey? Yeah. So yeah. I, I worry about offending you in case you hit me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't hit you. I'd probably moan at you and swear. Loudly. Oh, you're yeah, swearing. <laughs> But I wouldn't actually hit you. Awesome. <laughs> okay, well, let's go look at the lab, guys. Of course, while Rob and I were the only two here, it was, it was great. We had plenty of space. Now we've got people joining us, so you probably met a couple. You'll meet a couple more in the future. Um, that they're doing their own projects on things that we've uh, started and they've grabbed hold of and really want to push out. So we've been building walls, we've got the office sorted now just about, um, but what will happen is we'll need more office space and we'll need more lab space. So our plan is to go through to next door. There is a unit this side of this wall. Um, we've actually taken it over now. We're going to be putting a door in there, so we've got to clear through straight from this office to a suite of offices that are going to go the other side. Um, and below that, we're going to have um, a production facility. And now we'll show you around, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I've been speaking about. So if you've followed this, you'll know that me and Steve started this in our kitchen. And then we moved into the lab, and, and the lab was pretty basic for about a year or two. And there's been an awful lot of changes. Now we've built four workstations, as you can see. One, two, three, four. This one's mine, incidentally. Steve's is over here. And this empty one belongs to a friend of ours called Tony, who started working here. Tony's away today, so he can't be on the video, but I'm sure you'll see more of Tony as the video progresses. That's his workstation. 
For anybody who's interested, you will note there's one workstation left. So we have our four workstations here, and here we have a, uh, another workstation that's really dedicated for the KDEX machine and the um, CO2 cutter that we've put there. Now that will change um, soon, we'll move that, and we'll, you'll get the idea of that as we walk through and see some of the other changes that we've made. If you saw one of the videos we did, you remember that Steve and I do all of this work. So when we put the mezzanine up, we have these blue beams here, they're 650 kilos each, and Steve and I put them on our shoulders, walked up a ladder, and stuck them up there. So me and Steve are physically, literally doing all of this work. So when you think about what it is that we're doing and you see the changes that are coming on, you've got to remember that it's Steve and me doing it all. We are physically getting in there and doing it. So we're growing, we're changing, we're adding people, people are coming on board to do stuff. Uh, in case you're wondering about where Sam works, Sam doesn't actually need a workstation. Uh, Sam actually has her desk upstairs, as you know. So we've got Steve, Tony, me, free workstation, and Mandy. You'll meet Mandy in a few minutes, and she'll tell you a little bit about her. Now, in terms of the projects that we're doing, we're all responsible for our own projects, but there's a bit of crossover going on. So Steve's working on the polymers. Tony, who you get to really meet, is working on graphene additions into concrete, and we'll have a quick look at that. I work on batteries, as you know, and we've got a crossover there going on a little bit, and we'll talk about one of those crossover projects as well. So lots of changes at the lab, lots of building work that me and Steve have been doing. And here you can see our new reception. So we've built this reception area, uh, and above it we've got actually a roof space. And that roof space is strong enough to take another room. So up here we're going to uh, put in the walls for another room, and that's going to become our clean test room. So the KDEX will go in there, and any of the clean test machines are going to go in there. So we'll have a new room with the test machines in there, and then that fifth workstation will become free, so we can have a fifth person working there. Um, this is Mandy's desk, incidentally. So Mandy is our, our lab technician, our new lab technician. This is her main desk, and she works here and in the new storeroom. So when we took the new building, we built this reception area, we built the room above, and we put this door in and, um, to take us into that new area that we're going to be developing over the next sort of three to four weeks. And that's what we're working on right now alongside all oh, the other crazy stuff that we're doing here. Now, one thing we've done actually as well is we've changed this area to we've now got a little sort of reception kind of area for people as well to sit, have a think and a chat and a cup of coffee. So we've got our little coffee table, uh, incidentally our exercise bike in case we get too fat, and a nice little sofa here to sit down and have a chat when we need to chat about stuff. Obviously this is the fourth workstation that is currently um, there. So let's have a walk through to the um, next bit, and Steve will tell you a bit about what we're planning to do there. Okay, so this is a brand new building for us. Not a brand new building in itself, but it's a direct mirror image of the one we got next door. We've taken it over, so it's the same size, same sort of shape. And what we want to do in here are a couple of things, really. We're going to put a mezzanine floor straight through the length of the building and up there you might remember I was pointing at a door going into the next offices. That's going to be a suite of offices up there. And we've got plenty of floor space uh, to do trial runs really. We, we take stuff um, up to a certain point. We don't actually manufacture but this we need to get it ready for manufacture so that would be what this is used for down here. Um, you may remember back in Rob's old video that we had a, a wall just there with plenty of stuff piled on top. It's exactly the same here, but inside that wall we've left it as a room and we're going to show you exactly what's in there now. So we're inside that room I was pointing out from outside and what we've done, you may have seen a load of cupboards being built out there. They're all going up on the walls. They've all gone round the side on the floor and there's a reason for that. We use a lot of chemicals, as you can see around here. Uh, regulations and safety, really. We want to confine them into one space with one person that's uh, taking control of them. That person is Mandy. This is Mandy. Hello. So what are you actually doing with these, Mandy? I'm cataloguing the chemicals at the moment. I'm getting them all into order and um, putting them all in the cupboards that uh, you've kindly put up. Okay. Are you enjoying it? I am. That's the main thing. Yes. And you're not sniffing too many, No, you? I'm not sniffing too many. <laughs> that's good. And it's so kind of you to let me work for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
So you'll be seeing more of Mandy. Well, we're fine, we'll see. No, you'll be seeing a lot more of Mandy in the future. Thanks, Mandy. So I'm at Tony's workstation, and Tony isn't here, as I've said, but this is the stuff that he's working on. This thing here. This is a graphene addition into concrete, and this is a block that he's playing around with, because we're going to see what kind of piece of electricity we can get out of this thing. It is supposed to can, um, generate electricity on compression, um, and we're going to see if it actually does, and to see if we can actually do it. Now, we have had this stuff independently verified. You can't verify it like that. What you need is a whole lot of these things. This is a concrete mould. It's a standard mould. This is one's 100 by 100. We have 150 by 150. We make up these blocks and send them out to another lab to test the strength of those blocks. And it turns out our graphene addition into concrete makes the concrete 40% stronger. Actually, 42%, which is pretty awesome. So we already had that verified. We're rerunning those tests just to make sure we're not loonies. Um, but that's Tony, and that's what Tony's actually working on. Now, when you work in an environment like this, of course, one idea always sparks off another idea. You can't help it. So we, we sit around, we drink coffee, we chat about stuff, and ideas just come up. And from the um, concrete, we were thinking, well, hey, this graphitization technique that we've got is really awesome. How about we have a look at extending that? What could we do? And a friend of ours mentioned this problem. If you get a lot of this stuff, uh, this is just coal dust. This coal dust, obviously, is non-conductive. The problem with coal is it's uh, a, a bit of pariah industry. Nobody's really using it anymore, so there's an awful lot of coal kicking around with nothing to do. And we decided to attempt to turn it into graphite. And that's what we've done here. That's pretty awesome. We take that black dust and we turn it into this silvery dust. Uh, this silvery dust uh, looks like graphite. Might not be, but it certainly looks like it. And there's another interesting thing about it, is that non-conductive coal dust, when we measure the resistivity of it, then suddenly that resistivity has dumped right down. So the resistance of that is about a kilo ohm or so. If I give that a bit of a squeeze, there we go, I can get that down to about 400 ohms just by squeezing it by hand. So we have certainly taken something non-conductive and turned it into something conductive. And there are no metals in there, incidentally. Uh, so it looks like graphite. It has the resistivity of graphite. So if it looks like graphite, cracks like graphite, and walks like graphite, it's likely to be graphite. We obviously need to send that off for characterization to see what we've got, really. But this is another project that me, Steve, and Tony are actually working on to see if we can turn coal into a useful graphitic product. OK, so part of the tour, I thought I'd bring you up to date with what's happening with the polymers. We've um, released a lot of battery videos with the progression of the battery lately. But uh, just to let you know that I am still working on the polymers in the background. Um, what I'm using is biopolymers, so we're starting with materials, starting materials are polysaccharides and proteins, and we're stitching them together to make thin films. Now, you may have remembered, we created hard plastics in the, in the past, um, and shot bullets at them and the rest of it. People have approached us wanting a more flexible, flexible plastic, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. So we've got thin films that we can, um, that are much more plastic. Um, and it's for things like this. This is a, a medical device. It's actually a stent which is put into a vein and expanded. So that bit there is roughly a balloon, really. Um, so people are wanting biopolymers that, that won't react with the body, but will give that sort of effect. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. So here we are back at my bench, and as you can see, I'm working on battery plates. And here's the freestanding battery plate, one of them. We're working on making this yards and yards long so that we can um, reproduce it. And that's a continuing process while we try to get the uh, KDEX to verify it and get verification done. So we're bit busy doing long-term charge and discharge tests on large-scale versions of this to make sure that we've got everything right. So it took us a little while, to be honest, to sort ourselves out. We thought for ages that we were going to make batteries. Uh, actually, we're not. What we're doing, we've decided, is that we create intellectual property. We get the idea, show the idea it could work, and take the idea to a stage, a stage when we think it's ready for manufacture. Obviously, we help with the manufacturer's stuff, and with the batteries we, wouldn't, we will manufacture if we need to. 
But what we essentially do, we've decided, is that job. And so it's all graphene-based, as you noticed, oh, apart from the polymers, they're, they're actually biopolymers of various kinds of some graphene in, but that's what we do. Now, having realised that what we do, it's actually made things really, really um, straightforward and simple for us. It's really helped focus everything, helped us decide where it is that we're going and what it is that we're doing. And that's one of the reasons there have been so many big changes. The fact that we now understand exactly what it is that we do as a group of people enables us to do it that much more efficiently. Because we're not doing this by ourselves, obviously. There's now a whole team of people that you're not seeing. And particularly with thanks to people like Evan, for instance, who I've mentioned before. Evan's a big help to us and a great support for us and really pushes us forward. And then there's guys like Christopher, who also is an enormous help to us. I didn't show you what Christopher sent us because it just was um, in a corner. We, we make those big battery plates out of it, actually. He, he sent us a coating machine so we can coat those plates with it. So there's a lot of people out there actually help us to get this stuff done. And having a good team of people here and a good focus allows me, Steve, Gary, Tony, Sam, Mandy, all to be able to work towards a common objective and help to focus in what it is that we're doing. Now, of course, although that team seems relatively large, actually, it's a huge task that we've got. So you've seen us doing the building. We do that by hand. You've seen the projects that we're working on. It can take some time. It can take three, four, five weeks to do a particular task. So the videos don't necessarily get churned out all of the time. But that's not like a My French teacher, when there is a, isn't a video we cease to exist. We're working hard on the stuff that you've had a look at. Anyway, I thought that would be of interest to you. I hope it was. And thank you very much for watching.